So you bought a Model 3 or a Model Y, but you want some of the convenient features of the Model S and X. Let's start with the Model X. What is a great feature of the Model X? Well, it's something that prevents this soft closed doors. So instead of slamming the car doors or having your passengers slam the car doors, you can simply just push it closed. And even though it's not all the way in right now, the soft close mechanism will suck the door completely in without you having to slam the door. Model X status on your three or Y. So what are we cooking? All right, editing Brandon here. So just for storytelling sake, and I want you guys to do this in the best order, there are going to be a few cuts around, and you'll notice that location and time-wise, but don't worry about it. I'm going to put this video together so that you can install these soft-closed doors as simply and easily as possible. So you should actually start from the driver's side door when we're talking about removing door panels. And that's just because all your window controls are over there, so it's easier to adjust the other side if this one is done first and foremost. I'm gonna start on the passenger side, but another reason is also why I feel like I didn't record that side good enough, so that's why we're gonna move to the driver's side door. I wanna give you guys the best step-by-step -step guide to install this, because if you follow these steps, there's no way you can mess anything up. Three screws, you're gonna take this pick right here, you're going to put it underneath the reflector, and then you're just going to pull it outwards. And it simply pops out just like this. Now, the reflectors have a direction, it tells you this way up so when you install it just make sure you put it that way up so this one's removed there is the torque screw right here there is a torque screw underneath this door clicking button right here and then one more torque screw underneath the window controls right here the next thing that you need to do is remove the tweeter speaker right here so to remove the tweeter take two pry tools and slide it up yeah just, there you go the tweeter is being held on by this clip and this clip right here, there's this plug right here. You're just gonna want to pull it out just like that. From there, we're going to remove the inner door panel. We're gonna start from the bottom. Take your pry tools. And then it's easier too, so it's like kind of like twist it like that. Better if you can stick your finger underneath so you can just you know, use your hand. Just Okay. There you go. Once one is out, you, can, you got the rest. All right, so we're gonna start removing the other clips. So just pulling it out. Put your foot right here to be honest and just should be a clip up here as well from there if all the clips are completely removed we should just be able to slide the door up and gently very gently pry it off because you still have wires connecting to the door we need to disconnect those wires so that we can work on this the first thing that you're going to do on this door is find the puddle light down here from there unplug that I'm gonna unplug it. You're gonna see the window roll up, I believe. Here, let's do it. Check out the window, guys. Rolls up because it thinks that the door is closed. From there, you're gonna to want to make sure the bolts for the window are where you can easily remove them with a ratchet. We're gonna do that in a second once we disconnect that door panel, but we need this door panel still to adjust the window. So remove this big grommet right here remove this big grommet as well from there you're going to want to roll the window down until you can see the bolts right in the middle of these holes it does take a second so be patient you really got to get them right in the middle awesome guys so you can see this one is right here and this one is right here perfect for me to put a tool in and get them out now what we're going to need to do is remove this part from the actual door itself to do that we need to release the emergency pull handle as well as any cables going to the electronics here we're going to use this tool to remove this zip tied part right here just go underneath the zip tie and then pry it up and there's a second one right here so again go underneath the zip tie and pry it up if it doesn't come straight up just wiggle it a little bit and it'll come out like that we're going to remove the door lock now so there's two clips on each side right here that are holding it down you need to release it from those clips so you're going to need to pull it up just like this and from there you should be able to slide it out of this groove right here it's being held in by this so just route it from underneath and your emergency door release will come off from there there's this wiring harness let's take out this white wire disconnect it and then you're going to need to unplug this one. All right, so this one also pull it up and out of the groove it sits on. From there, you can easily, easy early, peel it off. And if it doesn't come off, take a pick tool. You're gonna to want to press it into this little lock piece and press it down. 
There you go. So that will be unplugged. So three things unplugged so far. And then from there, we're gonna take this wire out of its clip, this wire out of its clip, and then we need to pop this zip tie part off, wiggling it out, pulling it up. We'll undo this blue clip. So take it out of its little groove right there, and then cold hands. My fingers are like so purple right now. There you go. This one's for the tweeter. So uh, we need one more uh, zip tie removal right here. From there, your door wiring harness is disconnected and your panel's out. Nice. We'll just put her right here for now. So we're gonna need a 10 mil socket to go into here to remove these two bolts so that we can take the window off. You're gonna want to mark where the window sits with some tape. That way you can perfectly align it against this weather seal right here to make sure it has the factory OEM fit. First thing we gotta do before we remove anything is mark where we're gonna take it off. First, you're gonna mark the edge of where the window sits. That way you know how far to put it back. You don't wanna put it back too far and you don't wanna put it back too far that way as well. So we're gonna mark the back as well as the height of the window. And the height of the window is gonna be based off this right here. So before we remove the bolts, this inner weather stripping is gonna to have to come out. There's just a little plug right here, which it sits into. And then one on the outside, you can see these orange pieces right here are basically it. Once you pull that off, you can pull it up and it's just going to pull away from the car. And now as we already removed the window, so you're going to need a 10 mil socket for this, as well as a 10 mil socket for this. So these are actually 13 mil. Apparently for the Model Ys, they're 10 mil. So these, Model 3, 13 mil. As Anon is undoing the bolts, I'm just holding the glass up here to make sure it doesn't fall or it doesn't wiggle around too much. So we're going to use a magnet as well to make sure the bolt doesn't fall down into the door. We will have to remove this panel anyways, so it's not a huge issue if it drops down. It's just better if it doesn't. The window just pops out like that. Put it somewhere safe. Chris's car is very safe. So I have a Model 3 behind these grommets are typically screws if and if only you have a Model Y. So if you have a Model Y, you would remove these and take the screws off behind here to remove this black part. For Model 3s, all you have to do is remove these. These are going to be eight mil bolts, so we're using an eight mil socket. So before removing this, you're gonna wanna loosen it a little bit before you just pry it off, especially if you've never removed this before the rubber sealing around it might be a little stuck to the door. So take a pry tool and you're going to go around the edges, loosening it just before you need to pull it out. There you go. We should unplug this as well. Okay, so we're also going to need to remove these bolts. So one, two, three, and four. Oh, there's a fifth one over there as well. <laughs> First, we're going to unplug this. There we go. We're gonna also unplug the wire that goes to this right here. This clip is holding the outer part to the inner, so just push it through. There. It should click out. This needs to be separated from this right here. So we need to undo these little zip tie points right here, right here, right here, and right here as well. These zip tie points need to be pushed out from the back. So it comes out like this. There's little clips on the inside. If you just yank it out, you're gonna break the clips. That's why you need to push it out. Do you pinch it in? So you reach your hand from the back and pinch it like that. All right, so you're gonna pinch it in and pull it out. This one popped out. Oh, okay. Don't worry about that. This clip pops out. That's gonna give us clearance to push this one out as well. It's being held in out right here. That clip. Oh, okay. That's the sound of the other one falling inside. There's a clip down here and there's a clip right here. Sometimes when you pull it out, the clip might fall through, but you have access to this entire door part right now, so it doesn't matter, you can just grab it out. If your clips fall, you could just use a magnet tool, go down here and fish it out. Also, if your window bolts fall, they'll be down here as well. So we're just gonna put that clip back on like it never fell off. For some Model 3s, this window railing is in the way. For mine, it's not, but for more convenience, we are going to move it over. It's just being held on by this one bolt up here and this bolt down here. So we're just gonna loosen this one and then undo this one. That way we can slide it over. That way we have more working room inside of here. And from there, 
should be able to wiggle around. That way you have more play, more slack to be able to put the new door handle in. We need to remove these bits right here to get this latch out to replace it with a soft closing. There's a plug right here. If you look in right here, you'll see it. So this needs to come undone and that's for the door latch. Little guy looks just like this. It sits in here, we're just pulling it out. These are T25 bits. Highly recommended a high torque machine. If you hand crank them, you're gonna break your bits. You're gonna want to pull in this emergency door release. So take the rubber and just push it through the hole. And that way you can fish the rest of this through. For soft closed doors especially, it's actually mandatory that you remove this so that you can remove the latch mechanism. And that is your old latch mechanism. So it looks like this in case you're interested for whatever reason. Now we're gonna open the new box from TLO Elf. Again, check this out in the description below. We're gonna have Model X soft closed doors. Also, do you know what this foam is for? Let's match it with the old one, yeah, yeah. So working on the passenger side, you're gonna want to get the suction mechanism that has the B on it. So there is a difference. This one has a loop and this has this little cylindrical little part. This cylindrical part is needed for the front one. So we're doing the front passenger door, look for B and look for the part that has this cylindrical metal bit. It's gonna come with these foam pads and that's great for noise isolation. The original one came with them as well. So we're gonna take the one that looks like an N and we're gonna put it like this. Putting the U shape on this side. So once you have the U and the N, you're gonna have this last long piece of foam starting up here. You're gonna curve it around here and then run it under here. I'm sure it's fine. No, it's fine. It's gonna get compressed anyways. It's still, you don't want too much. Okay. It'll be uneven. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're gonna right. Set it, right. So you have a little bit of excess. Snip, snip. We're just gonna cut that excess foam off. And then you're just gonna wrap it around the metal right here. This should be for noise isolation. So it'll seal it around here. You have this foam right here, as well as this foam right here. And now we can get to installing this. Looks like a frowny face. Don't be sad. Now the suction motor is gonna go inside of here. So we're going to take the emergency release latch cool. and we're going to fish it through here. The foam provided right here is so the wire doesn't bang against the metal and cause rattling. So just make sure the foam is out a little bit right here. And now our door latch is in place. So you can see the suction lock right there or foam around the edge right there to keep it from banging. You're gonna use the OEM Tesla screws and thread them inside of here. First, we hand thread these in and then we're going to use our drill, set it to low torque and push these in. Gently go one by one, not all the way in yet. And after you go gently, now you can really torque them in. Make sure you're on a low torque setting. So after this sits in, take your OEM plug, the one that you unplugged earlier, and then just push it back into this new door latch. Now we are going to put the bolt back in for the window railing and then tighten this one as well because we did loosen it. So now we're gonna put the plastic piece back on. Make sure the speaker is in the speaker spot. We're gonna put this blue plug back in. So make sure this wiring harness is out like this. This should sit pretty flush. Remember, this is holding it in, so don't pull around with this too much. You're gonna want to push this metal clip in. So you're gonna want to put your hands in, go from behind, and push this clip through. There's also this clip, which is gonna go into the door, and there's also one on this side, so make sure they're aligned, and then you can just snap, snap it into the door, just like that. Awesome, guys. So it's being held in by clips. Now we need to put the bolts back in. There's five bolts that we're going to need to put in here. One, two, three, four, and five. So those are gonna go in. And for this one, use very low torque setting because it's plastic threaded, otherwise you're gonna strip it. As he bolts those in, we can start plugging in the speaker wires. This green clip is gonna go to the bottom speaker. So again, low torque, and then at the very end, you're gonna want to hand tighten them. That way you do not strip those threads. From there, you can start putting these clips back into their holes. So this one will clip in here. This one goes right here, secure in. This one is gonna go right here secure in. You're going to get these gunmetal-ish gray bolts and you're going to put them into the door. One here, one here, one here, one here, one here. I'm not done yet because there's one, two, three, and four for the speaker. You want all that bass to be dropping. And keep going because there's one here, here, and here. 
That's gonna be all your bolts in, so just put them in hand tight first. I'm just gonna plug this wire right in, and all the bolts are in. All of our clips are in. We're going to put this clip in, and then our tweeter wire can go in right here. That's good. Lastly, the impact sensor. Make sure to push the red clip all the way in. And now we're going to put the window back in. So we need the window bolts, one that'll go here, and one that will go right here. So have, seriously, have someone help you slide the window in. It needs to go into this weather stripping right here. That's gonna help you align it. Hold, hold that, hold that, hold, hold. I help you. Is, is that helping? You say pick to pull this one back because like, uh, otherwise the window's gonna have oh, a hard okay. time sliding in. This metal piece, if they're too close together, the window is not gonna slide down. So you're going to use some kind of pry tool to pull this towards you and that'll help you align the window. Now remember the tape we had here previously? You're gonna want to align it to this. So once your tape's aligned back to where you had it originally, you're gonna want to put the weather stripping back on the inside. So slide it down starting from that end and then you're gonna continue all the way to this end. Remember there's a couple of orange plastic tabs at the end and the holes that they go into. So push this down and then try to align the plastic tabs and push it in. Make sure it goes over this noise seal, weather seal as well. All right, I would not recommend you using an impact or a, a mechanical tool for this because if you put too much torque on the metal plates that are holding your window, that might cause you to lose the window. Pro tip. Thick. Now be super careful not to drop it, otherwise uh, you're gonna have to remove this whole piece again. So use a magnet, make sure it catches some threads. Guys, be super careful with this part. You do not want it falling in your door panel. Just thread in a little bit first because then you can still move the window around. Now we can test it once we plug in the footwell light because right now the car thinks the door is closed. So to test this, you could pop this light out or if you have a spare one, which is really cheap. Wait, these are the same ones that are in your trunk too, huh? You can just find these anywhere. Pretty universal. So plugging this in, the window should roll up. Roll down. Roll up. I think it's going to roll up. Nope, I think it's going to roll down. Perfect. It rolls down. All right, we're going to temporarily place the weather seal back on. And we're going to hold this. Just guide the door close. Uh, okay, no wires will get snagged. So we can see that it is not lined very well. Otherwise, it'd be hitting this glass. So easy fix. All we got to do is take our 13 mil and adjust this side. Um, it was fine down the bottom, just when it went to the top, so the top part. Whenever you need to adjust the window, make sure you first unplug the puddle light, and fine. then once you do that, you can take your ratchet and undo the bolt. I'd say about three clicks is enough to where there's still some tension on it, where you can slide it around, but also not enough to where it's going to be just like falling all over the place. But if yeah. you are also getting a lot of wind noise in your cabin through your windows, this is a great way and a great time to adjust your window to make a better Wise. seal. Okay. Woo! Wait, wait. I want to see how close it is. I mean, no. I think the whole thing now just shifts over a little bit. Yeah, I, have to shift it. I wanted to keep these multiple clips in because I wanted to show you that it sometimes does take a couple times to realign the window. No big deal though. So same thing. Unplug the puddle light. Okay. There's only two bolts for the window, so undo whichever ones you need to do to move the window around. Secure those. Plug the puddle light back in, and then test closing the door, making sure no wires get snagged. A little too far. No, 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 no. I think it's good. Close it. No, way too far forward. I can put my finger through here. <laughs> uh oh. -uh. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. All right. We're gonna grab our little cloud friend and we're gonna put it back on the little hooks. There is a very distinct way in which it'll go. Find the way. This is the way. And hooks, hooks hooks and then it'll just hang from there we have to pull it up though because that's how the plugs are going to go in we'll bring it back to the front we're going to just set it up right here against the side area we'll close the door a little bit and then we can start plugging in the wires first let's plug in our puddle lights then we're going to plug this white one in this white clip is going to sit in this little crevice right here. Push it in, and twist it to lock it into place. This wire is going to go under here to be with this wire right here. So we can click those into place. 
This one is going to rest in this groove right here. We're gonna take the speaker wire, we're gonna go up here. There's the zip tie point, which is going to sit right here. Then we have this blue wire. Let's connect that, just in here. And then we have this clip. It's gonna sit in here. All right, and then the pink parts are going to go where these little channels, clip channels are. All right, so this clip right here, there's a hole where this zip tie point is gonna go into right next to it. Okay, so you're gonna take the emergency release handle, put the cylindrical part into here, and then we're gonna take the wire, we're gonna twist it this way, and then put this into the groove. Pressing it down to make sure it locks in. All right, now we can clip it in. All right, so going from the top, press it down. Okay. No, wait, hold on. Uh, yep, all right, clips are aligned. Press it in. Awesome. Clips are in. All right, now you're just gonna screw the three bolts that are holding the door panel to the door back in. One next to the reflector, one underneath the driver pop open button, and then one under the window switch area. All right, so now we're gonna take our little reflector guy. Remember to pay attention to this side up. We're gonna shove it in from the up position first because it has clips. Boom, awesome. Now for the tweeter. All right, so now we have our tweeter. We're just gonna connect it. It only goes in one way. From there, make sure this little tab right here slides on to this little tab right here. It'll be very obvious. Slide the wire down, get the clips ready, align the tabs, and your little tweeters back in. Awesome. Now we are going to do the rear door. So we're not gonna put the panels on. So pressing this close, sucks it in, everything works just fine. You can now go ahead and remove your tape. All right, guys, now it's time to remove the back door on the Model 3. First, let's pop open our door. You have the door panel just like this. For the rear door, it's just going to be two screws to remove, unlike the front door. One right here underneath the door pop open button and one right here under the window control button. From there, you're just going to take two pry tools. You're going to want to come underneath the door. Let's start from the middle. What really helps is putting your hand inside this door part and prying it away from the metal a little bit, enough so where you can put a pry tool underneath it. It's great that these are angled because we can just push these in and then slide our fingers under it. From there, once you have some finger grip, you're gonna wanna push against the door and then pull the plastic away from the door. There's just gonna be clips that are gonna pop out of place and the door will swing open just like this. I believe there's two clips on the bottom right here and there's clips along the side. So you're gonna wanna pull these off as well. Big clip right there, big clip I believe right here. And from there, this is just gonna slide up and off. So let's do it together guys. We're gonna push it up and off. Be careful because there's still wires connected to it. Whenever I'm removing doors, because there's still wires connected to it, I will then close it a little bit so I can rest the door on this part as well. The first thing that we're gonna wanna do, and trust me on this, is to remove and uninstall the puddle light. So push this pin in and then we're going to pull it out. All right guys, so we want to remove the glass. So we're gonna want to take off these rubber grommets so that we can see where the window bolts will line up so that we can remove it. Let's watch it as I roll the window up. And as you can see, the bolt is now easily in view. What's important is that you are able to get it out with a socket or something. So you just need to have enough clearance to put that in and then take it out. From there, we can disconnect the door panel. Let's pull up the little cloudy bit. It makes it a little bit easier. From there, let's disconnect the speaker down here. So for this one, we're gonna push the little plug pin down towards the bottom, and then we're gonna pull it away from the speaker. Get your little C clip removal tool. There's the zip tie clips in here. You're gonna want to push it underneath and then wiggle it out. When it's removed, it'll look like that. Now there's a few more clips. So this blue one right here, we're just gonna move it out of its plastic clip housing. From there, we can separate this clip. If you guys are having trouble pushing it down, sometimes a pick tool like this will help. And you can put it inside of the little hole where the part that's keeping it clipped in is and push that down. Sometimes that will give you clearance and then you can just pull it apart like that. Let's get this white plug next right here. That's unplugged. And lastly, let's get this plug right here. This is the same as all the other ones. With a lot of patience. All right, times two with a lot of Patience! Okay, times three. 
with a lot of patience. Whew. Man, this little, let's try using that trick with this little pick and weakening the little tab right here by pushing it in temporarily. So that might make it easier for us. There we go, to pull this one out. This one's actually kind of locked in by a little tab on the top. So you're gonna wanna pull this little flap up. Hope you guys can see that. Pull it out. Let's push that little flap back down. All right, perfect. Actually, I think they're all being held in by those little flaps. Oh, that might make it easier. All right, guys, I think I just made a new discovery to get these tabs to open faster. On the back, there's like a little flap. If you can use a pick tool to flip that up, it pushes the locking mechanism into a more release state. So that might help to remove those. Good to know. Once you do that, the door panel should be separated from the door. <laughs> Let's do a quick test and open this up. You can see the wiring harness is completely disconnected. And our door panel can come off just like so. All right, guys, from here, there's this emergency release latch. This needs to come out. To do this, you just wanna unclip it from these plastic tabs right here. A great tool for this would be a pry tool. You're just gonna go underneath here and pull it out from that. Sometimes you can even just pull it straight out without any pry tool. There's a clip right here, which is also being held onto. For me, it's like a C shape, so I'm just gonna scoop it up and then fish it out from underneath. And then this should be released like that. This is going to be fed into the door once we get this part off. Do not, do guys, do not touch these four bolts. Do not touch those four bolts. Please, I am begging you. No touchy touchy. All right, now it's time to remove the glass. So we're gonna focus on these two bolts. The first thing that you're gonna want to do is mark your glass with tape. Now this is the last door I'm doing, so I've kind of learned a lot in my time of doing this. Number one is that you do not want to be stingy on tape. Place as much tape as you can, get the best alignment. So in the front, I'm gonna place a piece of tape right here. You can see it's indenting it a little bit. Just remember that, or for me, I will remember that. Remember how your tape is placed. And then I'll take this other piece of tape and we're going to place it right here as well. This one also with a slight indent. I'm also going to do the height. This one's less necessary, but I still like to do it. So we're going to mark the height right here. And so you can see it like crosses right here. And then we're going to do the height on this side as well. Looking on this side, it might not sit as flush. You can see it kind of bulges a little bit right here, but I like it to where it's sitting right above this black trim piece. So now you're gonna need two things. You're gonna need someone to hold the window. You're also going to need this 13 mil. So we're gonna take this and start removing the bolts. You're also going to need a magnet to help fish out those bolts because it's easiest to not have them fall through the door. So have magnet at the ready, 13 mil, we're gonna go into this first hole and we're going to go to the left. I like loosening a little bit on this side first and then we're going to loosen this one a little bit as well. From there, I'll go back to this one and we're gonna remove it all the way. Once it's threaded all the way out, I'm gonna take my magnet and I'm gonna put it in here to help pull this out. Boom, that's your window bolt removed. Boom, another window bolt removed. Before you remove the glass, you're gonna want to pull this plastic trim off on the inside. It's gonna go around up here. So clips are holding it in. Once these are unclipped, you're gonna to want to go along here and push this up. There's also this side, which is clipped in. So if you have tape on this already, move it to the side. You're gonna to want to undo this right here. Yep, it's one piece. So just clips and it goes over the weather stripping right here. Oh wow, this whole piece is one plastic piece and we're just gonna pry this off. So that is your weather stripping for the back. All right, guys, now grab the glass and just pull it up. Now we're gonna get our eight millimeter socket and start removing the bolts. I got a little bit carried away and I already removed some, but we have one, two, three, four, and five. We're going to also have six, seven, eight, and nine. From there, we're just gonna unplug our window regulator. It's a simple press in and pull down. From there, this whole thing is gonna come off. Gently pull it up. It's being held on by clips on the side. Oh. And there we go, comes out. 
right on out. Jeez, guys, there's a whole lot more working room with this door. First thing that we're going to do is feed our emergency release latch through. Yes, the Model 3 has an emergency release latch, but you have to take apart the door to get to it, so it's not very practical. This clip can be a little bit stubborn, so just persistence is key with this one. Once that's in, let's unbolt our OEM door latch. We're gonna put this guy on the max torque setting, and then quickly undo each bolt. Then this should just come on out. Let's grab our new latch. This one should have a loop at the end, and it's going to say A around here, right there. So to do this, let's worry about the emergency release cable later, and we're gonna line it up with the bolt holes over here. Once it's lined up, let's start hand tightening it. We're gonna go on the lowest torque setting. We're gonna push from this side and then also push from this side as well. We're not gonna go all the way in, just enough to have it grip tighter in place. And then you're gonna go in and really tighten all of them. Awesome. From there, we can wire the emergency release cable through. There's this foam piece. It does not need to go all the way through. It just needs to make contact with this metal so there's no rattling. Fish it through. Awesome. Just that, that that's pretty good. To activate the soft close, you need to plug in the OEM connector. That's pretty much it for that. All right, so now we're gonna put the black plastic piece on this entire part. All right, grabbing our boy here, flipping it in the correct orientation. You know what, since all the wording is going this way, I'm gonna assume that it's this way. However, if you look up, this sticks out. So we need to go and put this in first, and then come up places awesome so that is going to be in place like this the wires are going to come out from underneath remember these are eight mils so we can start lightly bolting these in that way this will hold on here all right so now let's reconnect the motor for the window Boom, awesome. The rest of this wiring is a wiring harness that goes to the door. But before we do that, let's take our emergency release cable and we're going to route it underneath here. So this C-clip goes underneath here and it shouldn't hide like that. Now we are going to take our fluffy little cloud and we're going to put it back into the door. It's going to rest on the clips up here. Once it's in the clips, you're gonna take your little fluffy cloud, make sure it's around all the top parts, and you're gonna lift it up because you need to plug some wires underneath said fluffy cloud. So first we're gonna plug in the blue one, and the blue one is being held in by these two clips on the side, so put it in there. Then you can plug this in here. Note for the audience, the speaker plug and the light plug is exactly the same. Be careful not to mix them up. Uh, all right. Now it's time for the glass. Tesla FPV glass. So first we are going to slot this in. We want it to make sure that it goes into the metal railings. So the window is going to sit behind the metal parts right here. You're gonna take your bolts with the washers on them. Do not use a impact drill unless you want a shattered windshield. So put a 13 mil on and screw it in a little bit. Just a little bit on that side. Take this one, do a little on this side, and then we're going to start doing micro adjustments to make sure it's good. All right, both bolts are in a little bit. The tape is pretty much lined up, so we're going to try it. We're going to tighten these bolts. This, actually, a lot of the excess is supposed to be shoved into the inside. So you would be shoving this in here. So shove the excess in there, and that's because this is gonna go right here, and then it's going to go under this C-clip. There you go. So that is your excess. So take a light, it can be from the door, the puddle light, or if you have a spare one of these, these are very common. We're going to plug it in and we need to do this because right now the car thinks that the door is closed based off this puddle light. So we need to plug the puddle light in, the window is going to roll down and that will allow us to see where it is based on the frame area around the car to make sure it doesn't hit anything. Let's plug this in, make sure you don't plug into the speaker wire. Before we test the door, close it, the window is very wobbly right now. And that's because we don't have our weather stripping. Let's take this, it looks pretty similar on both sides, but there is slight difference on this one compared to this one. So you're gonna take it like this, come up here. So the difference is uh, there's more felt on the side towards the car. 
So it'll just slot in like this, and then you could start pressing the tabs in. All right, time to test the window. So puddle light in. We're not gonna slam the window close. First, make sure you don't have any wires dangling. Then slowly close your door. Well, it looks like it'll clear. Why is the window so far down? That's not good. Why is the window so far down? Oh, that's why. It was rolled down. All right, time to test again with the window at its proper state. We will have to adjust this, but let's just close it and see how it is. How's the gap on that side? It's kind of big, huh? Uh, that gap is bigger. Uh, but this is not bad at all. This gap is fine. We're gonna move it over a tiny, tiny bit. Uh, first, if you're gonna make any adjustments, as always, you're going to want to unplug the puddle light. All right, now we need to roll down the window to make sure our bolts are in the good place. Down a little bit more. Perfect. Get your 13 mil. Have it go the other way. I'm gonna start loosening. About three to four turns is pretty loose enough for this. Very minute adjustment. All right, let's plug in our puddle light. Rolling the window up. Let's test close this. Always be cautious. That's even worse. Uh, the bottom looks more fine. I think this needs to get pulled up, right? Angled. Okay, uh, up. This is pretty good. Okay. All right, so now the window's in place, we can put these grommets to where the adjustable parts are. All right, so now grommets back in, door panel's good, window's aligned. It's time to talk about the fluffy cloud and the door panel. So the fluffy cloud is going to go on these clips right here. It's going to go over these holes right here, but the fluffy cloud needs to come up. That's because we have some wiring to do. Let's unplug our test puddle light. Window should roll up. Now we're gonna start plugging wires in. So do the bottom one first, did not get tangled. So we'll route this outwards. We are going to plug, we'll do the speaker last. Let's just go in order of bottom to top. So actually let's deal with this blue one. So the blue one slots into these two clips on the side. From there you can just plug it in. That one's secured. And then we have this white one. We're just going to connect, well it's keyed so it only go in one way. So the white clip is gonna go in this channel right here. Uh, we have this clip, which will go right here, just like that. We'll place this one right here. Try to angle the door panel more, because it's not gonna reach. Plug in the speaker wire, and then we can plug this in, but it needs to go over this. So let's remove this clip, bring this over, put the zip tie hole in. There we go. From there, we'll clip this back into place. Awesome, everything's clipped in, everything's good. We can now put the door panel back on. Uh, okay, now the door panel. So let's lower our fluffy cloud back into its fluffy position. All right, so just like the front door, it's going to slide onto the groove up top. All right, so what matters is the clips are aligned and they're not. Okay, the door needs to come this way more. Um, okay, <laughs> if it fits, it sits. Or I guess it's, there we go. And that is how you put a door panel back on. Automatic rolling windows work. The button works. This works. Time to close it and make sure it's still good. That works as well. Awesome. All right, that's pretty much it. There's only two things left and it's two screws. The one that we removed from earlier, the one that goes under the door pop open button, and the one that goes under the window button. Oh, all right, door panel is back together, guys. Car all done. All right, guys, so the video is done. That was a whole lot of editing. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Let me know what other mods you're going to get on your Tesla and make sure you use Tesla FPV at checkout and get yourself some soft closed doors as well as some auto presenting door handles. Like, I mean, come on, look at how excited I look. These are the absolute cheapest on the market. And if you follow all the steps, they're not that hard to install. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.